there, I am Lauren and welcome to episode 8 of the 24 Threads podcast. Today I am joined by my cat Gravy who is literally sitting in my lap right now. Here I'll point the camera down so you can see him. So if you see a random head or tail pop up in the middle of this podcast you will know uh, that it is Gravy. Um, been a couple of weeks since I have posted a podcast, so I am very excited to show you some updates that I have. I got back in to pattern testing. Um, I am testing a knit sweater. This is my first knit test, so I am very excited for that. It is going along really good so far. Um, let's see. I have a new summer design to share with you. I also have come up with a name for the two sweaters that I currently have in testing. See, there goes a the cat tail. So let's get started and we will jump into what I am currently working on. So right now I have three whips that I am working on and in all honesty, I'm probably going to start a fourth one very soon. Um, but I have missed pattern testing and having myself as the pattern tester. So I, whenever I saw this sweater posted on Instagram, I jumped on it and I applied and I got chosen. This is my first knit test, so I am very excited about it. It is going along very well. I'm trying to get it so it doesn't fall off my needles so I can show you. I am testing the Phases Sweater by Jennifer Berg from Native Knitter. You can see it's really hard to show you because my needles are kind of small for that and Gravy is eating the yarn. But um, let me see if I can kind of spread this out. I am to this plus cross kind of design. And after this section, I have, I believe, two, three more sections, and then the yoke will be done. I'm doing kind of a low contrast, uh, grays, this really dark green, black, and then this kind of like cream color with some other neutrals in it. Um, and then the body of the sweater is going to be the same color as uh, these little shapes up here. So low contrast, but it is in the neutrals that I love and I'm loving it so far. It, it has been a lot of fun to make. Um, I swatched this thing because originally I was going to go way out of my comfort zone and do a bunch of different colors that I love. Um, however, in real life, I just, I realized that I won't wear it if it is not a neutral. So I went back, I think, I think I swatched it about four or five times to try to figure out what colors I was going to do. I even went to the yarn store and bought yarn to uh, make this sweater in some brighter colors, but I don't know, something about the neutrals. I just keep going back to them, but I love how it is turning out and I am very excited to work on that some more this evening. Um, second thing I have is, um, I think I have shown you this one before. Yes, I believe I did last week and I really have not put anything into it. Um, it's, uh, this solid, um, I lost my train of thought solid circular yoke sweater pattern that I um, have written. It is being tested right now along with the yoke design pattern that I made. Um, and I have a new name for this pattern. It is called the Paradigm Sweater. So, and I thought that was kind of cool because Paradigm is like a set of written instructions. Um, and I was like, oh, well, that's perfect for this sweater because it is kind of like the sweater that made the whole 
circular yoke construction click for me and that I kind of use as a outline or like um, a map to make um, other circular yoke sweaters to make the the color work design one that I have testing currently and that is helping me come up with some future ideas. So this one is named, it is in his project bag and um, yeah, it, it, I need to put some more work into that because I need to finish it before my testers finish it because I need to take some photos of it for the pattern so that it will all be ready to release at the end of April. Um, so, well, while we're on that note, I'll just go ahead and this one is not a whip anymore, but um, it has a name. So I wanted to share that with y'all. Um, this is going to be the Dimensions sweater. And I thought that was kind of cool because when you're making it, you're like making a flat piece. But then when you put it on, it becomes three dimensional, which is kind of cool. Crochet stitches just are naturally whenever you are single crocheting into the back loop like you are in this sweater. It kind of just creates those separations in the stitches. And to me, it almost gives like a shadow effect, kind of making these thicker outlines uh, almost look kind of 3D, which is kind of cool. Um, I don't know. Tell me if you see that too, or if I'm just totally making things up here. But Anyways, this is going to be the Dimensions sweater that will be coming out at the end of April um, along with the Paradigm sweater. And um, testing is going really well right now. I've got several testers that are at least halfway through the yoke, if not further. And yeah, it is. I've got a few that just got their yarn in, but um, things are going well and I am very excited for that one. Um, okay, my third whip that I have, oh, it fell, it fell on the floor in front of me, um, is, it is a Lacy Summer Cardigan, and I briefly mentioned this one in my Instagram last, last week, I think, um, I just kind of showed y'all a picture of the stitch combination that I am using, it is out of fingering weight yarn, but because the stitches are so tall, this thing worked up so quickly. Um, really, I have like half of a sleeve plus the other sleeve to finish. If I just sat down and do it, I think I would be done in like an afternoon, maybe like three hours or less. Um, I don't know, maybe a little bit more since I'm still kind of writing the pattern too, but um, it's almost done. I just need to actually make myself finish it. But we're about to have a cold snap again today, or really, today is Friday, y'all are watching this on Monday, so the cold snap will have already come and gone. <laughs> but um, I think this morning when I went out, it was about 68 degrees, and by this evening, it's supposed to be 31. So it's a big difference, and it's making me not want to work on anything spring or summer but um that's okay because I will probably not have this pattern come out until um May just because I don't want to have too much overlap with the current test I'm doing I I don't know I've never tested more than one garment at a time so I'm sure there will be some overlap but I don't want a ton anyways Moving on to actually showing you what the cardigan looks like. Um, it is going to be a short sleeve cardigan. So I've got half a sleeve here. And it is, you actually start at the bottom. It is long. On me, after I block it, I think it's going to come down to like my knees. Um, so this would, it'll be good for like, um, if you just want to wear it as a cardigan, you can use it as a cover-up, um, just like a little throw-on extra accessory. It's good for a lot of things, but um, it is actually worked 
this way, you cast on or you chain um, the stitches across here and then you work until it is the correct width um, to go all the way around you. And then you turn it and um, you work the waistband, which is the solid. And then you continue and you do the back and the front panels and the sleeves. So really the only seaming that you have to do is at the shoulders. So it is really, it. I hope I'm not making it sound complicated because it's really not complicated. And um, the pattern will definitely help explain it in a much easier way than probably what I just did. But um, yeah, it's all one piece, two seams on the shoulders, two short sleeves, lace work, fingering weight, super quick and easy make. So once that is done, I will, I'm, I'm actually currently almost done writing the pattern. So um, that won't take too long. And um, then that one will probably go out for testing in April, maybe the end of March. Um, we will see. I'll have to see how all the other pattern testing I'm doing is going and the release of that one will hopefully be by the end of May, if not the beginning of June. So what was it? Last, yeah, last weekend I took a little trip to my favorite yarn store. It is in Montgomery, Texas. Um, it is called The Modern Skein. I love the store. They always have what I'm looking for and I don't get to go very often because I do live kind of far. Um, bought a little bit of yarn and I got some new knitting needles. I will show you the knitting needles first. They are in my phases sweater and these are the, I'm probably going to say this wrong, but I think it is the Leiky Cypress or Cypra needles. They are new and they are really cool. They are copper and it has like this nice clear cable. They are interchangeable, but I only got this one to try it out. I will be going back to it some more because I am really enjoying using that um, needle. And um, they're kind of cool because over time, since it's copper, they're supposed to get kind of like a patina from the use of them. You can polish them to keep them shiny like they are now, but I kind of want to see what that patina looks like because it really sounds like it will look really cool. So um, yeah, I'm excited to continue working with those and to get my hands on some more. Um, so the yarn I picked up, I got three skeins and it looks like I wound up two of them, but um, I don't even think oh yes this one is called oatmeal heather and sunflower heather um and this is scout yarn 100 percent wool this is the oatmeal heather it is a dk weight yarn and this is the sunflower heather same yarn, scalp, DK weight. And then I also got um, this double Sunday yarn. And it is a petite knit yarn. And this is the color Dusty Rouge. It's a really pretty color. Um, originally, these three plus a dark green and like a cream color were going to be my um my phases sweater which i still love this color combination i still think it would be a beautiful sweater so i am going to um use this color and I'm probably gonna have to get some more and make, I'm, I'm thinking about making a cardigan and then kind of using these as an accent color. Um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure 
exactly what I'm going to make. But um, the other day on my Instagram stories, I took a, well, I asked a question about what your favorite crochet stitch was. And every single response that I got was half double crochet or a variation of half double crochet, which was in this case, the herringbone half double crochet. I love half double crochet too. I have never tried the herringbone half double crochet. So I, one, I need to try the herringbone half double crochet. And two, I am thinking that I need to design something using the half double crochet stitch since everyone seems to love it and I love it, love it too. So maybe that is what I will use that yarn for. I, I don't know. I'm kind of in one of those places where I think I'm trying too hard to think of my next design um, but I'm I'm not really getting anywhere right now so hopefully something will come to me soon and I can start a new project with the yarn I just showed you. I have one other thing to share with you today and that is that last week I came out with a brand new pattern for some crochet hair barrettes. Um, I, can't, I have um, three different styles, kind of like this ruched one, a knotted one, and please excuse the cat hair because he is still sitting um, right here in my lap. This is the knotted one. And then this kind of rectangular beaded one. And the beads are optional. You can just do a simple rectangle too if you um, wanted just like a simple sleek um, looking hair barrette. But um, they are very easy to make. They are very beginner friendly. Um, the hardest part of it all is probably putting on the beads but if you can do a whip stitch um like you do when you seam crochet projects together or knitting projects you can make these barrettes um they use about they well in reality they use less than 22 yards um i believe this one takes the most um it's about 20 22 yards um a fingering weight yarn and then these other ones, the ruched one and the beaded one, take less than 20 yards. So these are great for if you have some scrap yarn. Um, and they make great gifts too. So if you want to check out that pattern, I will link it below. It is available on Etsy and Ravelry. Um, and also, I have a hair scrunchies pattern that was actually... I believe it was the first pattern that I came out with. If not, it was one of the first. And if you want to get the hair scrunchies and the barrettes, I have a bundle that you can get them both um, for a 25% discount price. But yeah, I've got, I've been wearing mine quite a bit actually. All you need um, if you want to make these is you go to your local craft store um, and get a package of three inch barrettes. I got these at Hobby Lobby and um, then you'll need a two and a half millimeter hook, fingering weight yarn, and optional some beads, optional some hot glue. I did not use hot glue, um, but you can if you don't want to like sew things down, if you want to like glue them to the barrette, you can, but um, I do have a, oops. I do have um, photo tutorials on how to make these barrettes within the patterns and I tried to make it so that it's not going to get like hung up in your hair and um, there is also a photo tutorial if you um, with my scrunchies pattern if you want to get the bundle so like I said those will be linked below and yeah, I think that is it for this week. Um, I did have quite a bit to share, so hopefully that was, I mean, I had fun sharing my projects with y'all. Hopefully you had fun watching it. And I, I think that is it. I will see y'all next time.
Bye.